Yeah. Running back nation. What is good? Six or sickos. What is good? Hope you're having a great day. Let's just look at some uh, Sixers headlines and react to it. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Sometimes there's definitely uh Daryl Morey made a claim. Daryl Morey made a claim. Daryl Morey's out here talking that. Sh- let me, let me wait till the video hits 30 seconds. So YouTube doesn't flag me for adult content. Daryl Morey's out here talking that shit boy. He's very confident in the roster that he's put together so far this off season. Let's look at it, bro. Uh, this is on boston.com, which that's good. I want to hear how the Boston writers wrote this. Okay. Boston.com Sixers exec says team will be looking to take the title away from the Celtics in 24, 25. They're the target but we don't feel like we give up anything to them. Ooh! Now, last year, Daryl Morey admitted that Boston is clearly ahead of us. And that's what happened uh, by the end of, of the whole shindig. You know what I mean? So he went into this off season, finally rid of Tobias Harris's contract can finally spend some money. And he did that. And he feels like probably he put a team together to beat the Boston Celtics. Here's what he said. Or here's what the writers say to what Daryl Morey said. Uh, The Celtics might be perched atop the NBA after cap during their sought after 18th championship last month with the Philadelphia 76ers president of basketball operations. Daryl Morey doesn't believe the gap is that wide between his team and the reigning champions. Now you let me know in the comments, just looking at the Sixers roster right now, is there definitely still a major gap between the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers right now? While the Celtics and Sixers have rekindled their rivalry over the last few seasons, it's largely fallen in Boston's favor. Okay. Despite establishing themselves as one of the top contenders in the East, Joel Embiid's superstar talent 76 have not advanced to the Eastern Conference Finals since 2001. Shout out my boy, the answer, Allen Iverson, the GOAT. You know what it is. Okay. Still, Maury expressed plenty of confidence in this team's chances of toppling the Celtics during the upcoming 24-25 season. Here's what he said. I'm a big objective data guy. We're right there in the conversation with a very small number of teams, top two, three, or four, somewhere in there. Maury said in a radio interview, 97.5, the fanatic earlier this week, obviously you have to give credits to give the Celtics their credit. They won the title. They're an excellent team. They've brought everybody back. They're the target, but we don't feel like we give up anything to them. We are going to be coming to take the title away from them. Um, I, I like Daryl Maury's confidence. Uh, I, I think that he's done a great job this off season so far, you know, um, again, there's people that think the Sixers didn't get better. Uh, for me, man, you know, we were, uh, a player better than Tobias Harris away from beating the Knicks, beating the Pacers and getting to the Eastern conference finals against the Celtics. And during the regular season, both teams healthy, the Sixers did beat the Boston Celtics full. You know what I mean? They're not unbeatable. This is what I was saying last year. They're not unbeatable. And the Sixers roster was not good when you really look at it. Now you replace Tobias. You brought Kelly Oubre back. You signed Caleb Martin. You brought Kyle Lowry back. You you signed Reggie Jackson. Obviously, you signed Paul George to a max contract to replace Tobias Harris. You got a 23-point-per-game two-way defensive wing who's not afraid to at least try in big moments. He might go three for 18, but at least he's going to try Tobias Harris out here, putting up four shots in 36 minutes. You know what I'm saying? So what Daryl Morey did this off season, I really do think if healthy can take down the Boston Celtics and my God, uh, a Philly Boston Eastern conference finals this, uh, this season will just, I don't know, bro. Like I'm, I'm going to, I'm not, I can't even, I feel like I can't even do it in my house. I can't even do it in this studio. Like I'm going to rent out of space to, to, to and, and nobody talk to me until the series is over. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's what Daryl Morey said, man. Give me your thoughts on what he said in the comments. Uh, but I like the confidence, and I and I do think on paper I like what he did this offseason. I think it's the best roster Joel Embiid's had 
since he's been here. And uh, I'm excited for it, man. Uh, Paul George gives advice to Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey to help the Sixers. The Philadelphia 76ers have a lot of pressure on them. That's true. There is a lot of pressure. You know, there was like scapegoats, right? Over the last couple of years, there was always a scapegoat, right? Uh, ben Simmons won't shoot. Okay. Markel Fultz is hurt or, or forgot how to shoot. Uh, James Harden is past this prime out of shape. James Harden has a bad hamstring. There's maybe he needs another off season. You know, there was always a scapegoat. And then it was uh, Tobias Harris stinks, bro. Stinks. I was bartending last night and some, some guys started talking about the Sixers. And anytime I hear it in the distance, I'm like, I'm not going to go get in that conversation because they probably don't really know much about what they're talking about. And then one guy says, Tobias is a good player. He's just a bad fit. I'm like, bruh, plug my, I can't get into this. I, anyway, uh, Tobias was a scapegoat because he is not good. Okay. And I still can't believe that Detroit gave him $52 million, but whatever this season yeah, it doesn't feel like they're like, you know, you got to get it done this season. You, there's no but at the end of this one, right? If you are healthy and lose, there's no, okay, well, but we had this issue or we had that issue or whatever. You, there's no scapegoat. The pressure is on. This team absolutely has to get it done. Anyway, uh, what did Paul George give advice Gives advice to Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. I don't know if Paul George is one to be giving out advice, but obviously Tyrese has the youth, George said. He has the legs, the speed, the quickness, similar to when I played alongside Russ, just except he can shoot the ball. Just the opportunities he creates with his speed and his tempo to push the ball. I think I can space the floor for him and just be a veteran to help him. I think we just complement each other so well, and the same goes for Joy. Exactly, bro. It's the fit. The fit just makes perfect sense. You don't have two ball dominant guards. You don't have two redundancy on the wing. You don't have you have three stars that play the game three different ways and complement each other. And, you know, that's why you overpaid for Paul George. I think it is a perfect fit. And just imagining that as he's saying, just the opportunities he creates with his speed, I think I can space the floor for him. You can imagine Tyrese Maxey sprinting down the floor and Paul George fading out to the three-point line, ready to catch and shoot at a league-leading 45.4% last season. It's only, dude, it's not even August. I'm way too hype. I got to wait two months. I got to wait two months. Why, God? George, who has been a part of Big Three Star Duos in the past, have some advice for both Embiid and Maxi. Uh, uh, it's easy, man. George said, just go win. Let's go win. There's no ego with me. I think people took that out of context when we speak about my time in LA in the second option conversation. I think people kind of took that out of context. I just want to go win. It's not about shots for me. It's not about having the ball in my hands the whole game. It's about winning. I want to make winning plays. I know when over the course of a game, I need to be aggressive when I need to raise the level. But for me, it's about winning. That's all I care about is trying to win, putting everything towards that. And that's really the conversation us three need to have myself, Joel and Tyrese, whatever it takes, let's go do it. Let's get the job done. And then we just relay that to the team. I love this so much. I love this so much because the process was supposed to yield you three star players took a lot longer than people thought it was going to take, but you know, the Ben Simmons era was what it was, but even the James Harden era, Tyrese Maxey was not yet known as that star scoring guard. It was like, he could become this, you know? So you were still in a middle ground of like, are we going to ever get Tyrese Maxey's a damn star. Paul George is still a star. And Joel Embiid obviously is the best player in the game when he's healthy. I don't care what you say about it. The Sixers have three stars. They're all unselfish. Joel's an unselfish player. Tyrese Maxey, of course, is an unselfish player. Paul George is an unselfish player. It's almost like what the Nets did with three selfish psychopaths, except we, we have the opposite. <laughs> Let's go, man. 
Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, man. Are you as hype as I am? Uh, yeah, I'm ready for Sixers season to start. I want to fast forward the next two months. I know I'm a psychopath. I don't even really enjoy summertime because there's no basketball. Uh, but we are watching the USA Serbia game or Germany. No, it's Serbia. It's Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid again. Game one, I think. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Sunday at 11. We are watching that live right here on YouTube. So join me. Um, other than that, man, thanks for joining me. I'll see you soon.